Hey, it's Matt from Practice Perfect. Welcome back to the Accelerated Learning Center. Today we're going to continue learning about how to set up a patient profile. This is part two. Let's get started. Step one, picking up right where we left off, click on the incidents tab to reveal some more detailed information about the nature of the patient's injury, as well as all of their insurance coverage information if applicable. This is the first screen you will see when you click on Incidents. You can access it at any time by clicking Incidents. An incident can represent one of several things, a new injury, a type of therapy, or even an extension of treatment. Each incident contains its own financial, clinical, and potentially payer information as well. This tab is the basis for all new claims. When a patient is added, their first incident is also added automatically. At this point, you just need to complete the details about this incident as follows. The previous incident field is used to bring forward information from an earlier incident for this patient and should only be used in certain cases. Its use requires further instructions. Since this patient is brand new, this is irrelevant. The incident description is a key field, but up to you to define. Typically, the cause and nature of injury would be entered in here in simple terms such as slip and fall, lower back, or auto accident whiplash. If your clinic happens to deal with different disciplines, you may find it helpful to mention the type of treatment, example, PT, SLP, or OT. The primary provider should contain the therapist ultimately responsible for this patient. It does not mean that they will always be the person who is treating the patient though. Cause of injury is relevant if the cause was either work or automobile related. Place of injury is only relevant for auto accidents. Next is the billing details section. Note that this section will only need to be filled out in rare circumstances. For example, if you want a provider other than the primary provider to appear on invoices, make a selection in the Billing Providers section. If you know that this patient will typically be receiving the same treatment every time they visit your clinic, you can record that in the usual fee code. And then if the price or duration of the treatment is different than what was specified in the fee code itself, you can make note of that here. If you've enabled the auto charge function, this is what the charge will be based off of. Again, if you are unsure about these fields, it is best to leave them blank and contact our support department for more information. Under physician details, you can make note of the physician who prescribed treatment. If your claims or invoices require an authorizing provider, this is where that physician would be entered. On HICFAs, eHICFAs, and EDI invoices, this name is sent as the referring physician. If the incident physician is the same as the family physician, check off this box here. Under referral details, this is where we indicate exactly how a patient found your clinic. Was it their physician? Was it their website? Was it word of mouth or did they hear from a previous patient? As you can see, this panel will appear when you click on the dots in the search referral source. The panel itself includes separate tabs for physicians, other contacts, adjusters, providers, and clients. You can also indicate if the referral source is the same as the incident or family physician. And don't forget to record the date that they were referred in the referral date. While this is not a crucial date, it is useful for statistical reporting. The administrative details have been included in the Incidents tab for internal use by your staff members. Here's how they work. Divisions are generally used for classifying the nature of the patient. For example, whether they're Medicare, Workers' Comp, or MVA patients. Divisions are primarily used for reporting purposes to track revenue, referrals, and receivables based on the type of patient. The appointment color is used to identify the type of appointment on the scheduler at a glance. Please note that division and appointment color options must be set up in a separate section of Practice Perfect. Administrative details also has a couple checkboxes regarding statements, 
interest charges, and invoices. Check off the options that apply to this particular incident. Typically, these should be left untouched. The final heading in this tab is Location Details. Billing Office represents the office under which this client will be invoiced. For example, let's say that your patient is attending your downtown clinic, but all of your invoices, regardless of treatment location, say uptown. In this case, the billing location would be uptown. However, the service office would still be downtown. This information will not typically need to be changed and will default accordingly. Treatment location and home should only be used if the patients are receiving treatment outside of the clinic and should be discussed with our support department. Oh, and if you want to quickly flip between incidents, you can do so by using the drop down list in the top right hand corner of the screen. For self pay patients, it is typically not necessary to proceed to any other tabs that have appeared on the second row. For anyone being billed directly to insurance, then please continue. Step 2. The next tab in the incident section is statistics. The first heading, key dates, gives you a place to record important information such as the injury date, the day you first made contact with the patient, which will always default to the date of entry, and when they had their first assessment. Injury date is the only key date here and is only really required for automobile and workers' comp related injuries. If the patient is suffering from limited functionality, make note of it in the level of functionality field. Note that you must manually add functionality levels to the software by going to housekeeping, clinical, and then functionality levels. This is purely optional and for reference purposes only. Use the Injuries and Diagnosis section to fill in some more details about the patient's injury. Note that the options in the Diagnosis and Description fields come preloaded in the software. Typically, you're only required to enter Diagnosis codes, which are the initial ICD-10 codes relevant to this particular injury. Add as many codes as you want. The ICD-10 code listing is pre-populated. Body part and injury fields can be used for statistical reasons but are not required. ICD-10 does a pretty good job of tracking patient conditions. If you do want to track body parts and the nature of patient injuries, they can be set up under housekeeping, clinical, and then selecting either of the aforementioned options from the list. Step 3. For our purposes here, the intake and treatment plan tabs can be skipped. They are for the more advanced users. Please contact our support department for more information about these tabs. Step 4. The next, and possibly the most important tab, is Billing Rules. It's important that this information is filled out accurately as this data is directly related to your patient's coverage eligibility. It also ensures that your clinic is paid accurately and in a timely manner by insurers. Details about the patient's coverage, such as the remaining funds, visits, or units, will be visible in the blue header at the top of the screen. To add a payer to the incident, press the green plus sign. Add your payers in order of who is responsible for payment. You can rearrange the order of payers at any time by flagging them and using these arrow keys here. Please note that if you have multiple payers attached to this incident, you will be required to fill out the following information per payer. Now, the actual amount of coverage being provided by the payer in question will be filled out in the remainder of the tab. This section has been dubbed the payer portion. Note that not all of the options will apply to the patient and depend wholly on the details of their coverage. The options you choose may affect the way that charges are entered in practice perfect. If the payer is covering a percentage of the treatment cost, make note of that in the percentage field. If the payer is covering all charges up to a certain amount, make note of that in the total amount field. If the payer is covering a total number of visits, make note of that in the total visits field. If the payer is covering all amounts up to a specific amount of units, make note of that in the total units field. 
If the payer is covering a fixed dollar amount per day, make note of that in the amount per day field. And the last field in the payer portion section is units per day. If the payer is covering a fixed number of units per day, make note of that in this field. Moving on to client portion, this is where you record any information about a client's deductible, i.e. they are required to pay the first X amount of dollars of the entire treatment, or if they are required to do a daily copay, i.e. they will be paying a fixed dollar amount every time they see you for each treatment. The use of the show only checkboxes varies from situation to situation and should be discussed with our support department if you wish to use them. The payer information is copied directly from the payer profile. The action to be taken when rule exceeded is another important aspect of the billing rules. This will tell Practice Perfect what to do when the payer portion has been maxed out. For example, if all states' coverage has been exceeded, the next payer will be charged for the remaining amount. Note that if another payer is not specified, the charge will be directed towards the patient automatically, meaning that you don't necessarily need to add them as a payer. If you check off Show Warning, the user will be warned and asked to confirm that coverage has in fact been exceeded during actual treatment service entry. Coverage date simply allows you to enter a date range for the patient's coverage. Coverage renewal tells Practice Perfect what to do when the coverage date has been surpassed. The coverage renewal section is used to reset coverage amounts to the full original amount. You can set the coverage renewal to recur on a monthly or yearly basis. Alternatively, you can set it so that it never recurs. Step 5. After defining the billing rules, you're then able to access the policy slash claim info tab. Note that you cannot access this tab unless you've already added a payer to the billing rules. The entry of at least some of the policy slash claim information is mandatory to help identify your patient to the insurer, but the actual required fields can vary from payer to payer. Typically, ID number is the most important field here and is most universally required. The very first thing to do in this tab is select the payer who you're setting up the policy slash claim information for. The payers on this list are limited to the payers you added in the billing rule section. In the policy details section, input the patient's policy number, their group number, and their ID number. Again, the ID number is generally required. In the Claim Details section, the Payer Pre-Approval fields are completely optional and for your reference only. For workers' compensation and automobile accident claims, a claim number assigned by the insurer is generally required. Again, this will vary from case to case and payer to payer. Afterwards, you could choose the adjuster responsible for overseeing the claim. The adjusters present in this list will have been added when initially creating the payer. You can quickly add an adjuster from the screen by pressing this button here. Adjusters are generally only required for workers' compensation and automobile injury claims. If the patient is being covered under someone else's policy, such as a guardian or a spouse, you can enter their information in the policy holder section. Step 6. For our purposes here, the Tasks and Authorized Provider tab can also be skipped at this point. Please contact our support department for more information about these tabs as they are rarely used by new clients. Step 7. The Discharge tab is only to be used when a patient leaves your facility and won't be discussed here since this is all about adding a new patient. That being said, it is very important to properly discharge your patients when they are no longer attending your facility, whether they have completed treatment or not. Please make sure to inquire about how to properly discharge your patients when the time comes. And that's how you set up a new patient. Thanks for visiting. Be sure to check out all the other accelerated learning videos at practiceperfectemr.com. Bye for now.